Hello everyone, Crystal Fisher here and welcome to a new Spyro video and by Spyro I really mean Agent 9. This is what I'm talking about. Obviously you guys remember Agent 9 as a character in Spyro 3. He was also in I believe one of the Spyro GBA games. Anyway, what you're seeing here is some footage that game developer Mike Mika provided. Now he worked at Backbone Entertainment and uh, or as rather better known before the merger as Digital Eclipse who did the GBA Spyro games. So remember a couple of days ago he released that, that the Xbox beta stuff or like Xbox prototype. This is some other footage, I know I'm repeating a lot of the footage, there's, there's, there's barely any of it. However, really briefly, I believe he still has the ISO of this and we may be seeing more. But this is the first bit of footage that uh, he's shown off. Now, just to, you know, to get everyone, to prepare everyone, you've got to remember, this was very, very early prototype, very, very basic. Um, this was not how the game would have looked in any way. However, someone that actually worked on the original three praised the way that uh, it looked like Agent 9 controlled even in quite an early demo, so it's quite exciting. Now, it should be noted that this is not the Agent 9 game. The, the other Agent 9 game was developed, done by a different developer that we saw a video of, like a whole promotion, this was different. This picture here is more in line with what it would have looked like uh, if it had gone ahead. A bit more vibrant, um, you know, obviously a bit more cartoony and stuff like that. And it doesn't end there. A bit later on in the video, I'm going to show off a bit more concept art by Mike Mika, but you're actually going to see a five minute, like opening cutscene, um, like opening cutscene storyboard, which is really, really cool. So I'll let you watch that in a sec. Here's some more concept art. So we've got back and front view. I actually quite like the design for Agent 9 here. I think it's a good blend of the old and new one. The one, that, the cutesy one, the really cutesy one that was that was done by a different company, arguably, I don't think it looked as good. You've got this. The impression I get, and this was worked on around like 2002-ish, I believe. Um, it's actually very much different to, it's different It's different to Spyro as well, but it's, it's very much Ratchet and Clank esque to me like I kind of get I get a ratchet and clank impression from that especially that there and really you could argue there would have been a marker for this type of game um, I mean it, it's not it's not that out of the realm of like it's not like it was a marketing nightmare at least it doesn't look like a marketing nightmare in the early stages maybe it could be later this was meant to be one of the villains a reference to Charlton Heston I've never heard of him but I probably should have a eh? Yeah, there he is as well. What in the name of Cornelius do you want, you four-thumbed waste of spandex? Well, I'm, I'm not going to do an impression of the actual guy, but yeah. There you go. That's cool. Agent Omega. Kenny Omega. All right. Anyway, guys, here is a five-minute showreel or five-minute introductory cutscene uh, storyboard. this happen to you. Are you tired of the local galactic empire conquering your planet? Frustrated by pesky slave traders raiding your village? Well then don't delay. Contact the professionals. Agents for hire. Our offices are open 78 hours per galactic day to suit your schedule. Your money will be well spent when you choose our services. We have packages specially designed to suit your needs. Wow! Our specially trained troubleshooting agents are ready to take on any cosmic mishap. No job is too small. Not even for Agent 9. Oh! Oh, him! We want him! Who hasn't heard of Agent 9? Just look at him! He's huge! He's a legend! Now there's a hero! He's tough! He's indestructible! He'll... Whip their hides real good! Ahem. <clears throat> Gentlemen. I feel I should warn you that Agent 9 is unbelievably expensive. And given the scale of this job, I wouldn't dream of risking one of our lesser agents. How do you expect to pay for him? We offer you everything we have. You must be joking. 
Gentlemen, I sympathize with your plight, but Agents for Hire is a business, not a charity organization. If you want, we could possibly squeeze you in for Agent 31. Sir? He may seem small. Ah, uh, sir? What? Sir, this is Avarium. The uh, um, most precious metal in the galaxy. Gentlemen, please accept my apologies. If it's Agent 9 you want, then Agent 9 you shall have. I followed your orders, sir. Agent 9's fuel and equipment are ready for immediate departure. Here he comes! Are you sure about this, sir? That big ape's made us a lot of money. Besides... We have a contract to fulfill. Welcome home, Agent 9. I know it's awfully early, but we have another assignment for you. Agent 9? Agent 9? Agent 9? Ah! This is preposterous! Who's due back? Agent 2? Agent 34? No, no, they won't do! Those twerps paid extra for a guaranteed appearance. We need Agent 9 Planetside tomorrow morning, or they get their money back. Well, we could always give them a refund. Listen to me. We have just paid ten times the value of your life in Avarium for a contract worth half that. If you think I'm going to throw away a commission like that... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But... But we don't have an Agent 9! Then we'll make one. I hate to do this, son, I really do. But we have a contract, and I just can't take any chances. I know you've got some big shoes to fill, but you'll make a fine Agent 9. Just look at you. I, your hero material. If you have any trouble, just activate your Omega device. He'll give you any help you need. Make us proud, boy. See him again? Who cares? Firstly, can I say that I absolutely adore the music? I know there's probably just like stock music, but it's great. It's got this real, you know, corny, jazzy vibe to it, like with the whole commercial and everything like that. In terms of the pitch, uh, I mean, it's it's pretty it's a pretty decent first pitch, I think. I mean, I would have loved to see some of the stuff animated. And in fact, again, tying into the whole Ratchet and Clank thing, is that. It kind of, to me, feels like it could be, you know, in that universe. Like there's sort of that that cheap vibe to the, you know, presenter and stuff like that. You know, like the, you know, used car salesman esque sort of mentality and stuff like that. You know, jokey, taking the piss. Uh, but then there's also, you know, a story, you know, woven in there as well. It's not just a joke. Um, a lot of the, a lot of, there's a lot of different shots. So a lot of things are, uh, you know, coming in and stuff like that, which. I almost want to slow it down and actually look at the pictures in more detail because there's a, you know, there's a fair bit here that's sort of taking a considerable amount of time. Um, the whole idea of there being another, you know, Agent Nine is essentially a code name. Uh, you know, whereas in Spyro, he's, I think that's his name. I mean, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting because yeah, it actually changes the story as well. So I don't know if it, this obviously wasn't final. This wasn't the final draft of everything i'm sure they would have changed things because the interesting thing is that they did say they had planned at least two cameos or like sort of nods uh one to spyro and then crazy carry big spyro fan actually asked on twitter about sheila the kangaroo and apparently a sheila the kangaroo cameo was also expected 
which is absolutely fascinating, if you ask me. I find that really, really interesting. Sheila of all characters, and not James Bird, you know, Sergeant Bird. I mean, because that makes more sense in terms of the, the whole agent sort of thing. But then, uh, I mean, Sheila the Kangaroo, apparently there was also interest in wanting to do a, a game about her as well. And remember, there was a game called KO, the series called KO the Cam Kangaroo, uh, which was, I, I, get, I guess, I actually just realized that it's probably called KO, it's spelled K-A-O. KO the kangaroo, like knockout, could be like, you know, KO, like knockout, knockout the king. Yeah, I don't know, maybe, that, maybe that's a reference, but maybe it isn't. I think it was done by like a Polish company or some European company, not even Aussies, so that's kind of funny. But yeah, I like, look at that picture there, I, I like it. I, I would love to see, I would have loved to see this vision actually play out. Uh, that That's that's the kind of thing that I'm, I'm getting from this, that's my impression. Like, okay, you know, what must have gone on and I said this in the other video, but just the amount of politics and shit that must have gone down in the early 2000s after you have a series on a silver platter to Universal. And somehow, the, the only thing that they it actually comes from it is Enter the Dragonfly, a rushed mess, right? And then some GB, GBA games, which are cool, but everyone wants to play the proper 3D. You know what I mean? Spyro... Uh, can be 2D, you know, it can be 2D if you, if you do it right. I'm sure someone will come along and, you know, do it right one day maybe, you never know. But, whether it's a fan game or something else, but, like, the way, I mean, to think that there was three GBA Spyro games, right? Three GBA Spyro games. And, yeah, they got better as they went on, but they could only muster up two 3D platformers in, like, five, six years before, uh, what was the next, or five years before the Legend of Spyro series. To me, it's just a disgrace. It's just, it's criminal, criminal incompetence when it comes to the developers. And then you have all these cool ideas like Agent 9 and stuff like that, who isn't even a super popular character, but you know, they could have done something with it. They could have made something with this. They could have actually, you know, tried something else. In fact, if they'd done it right, they could have had it, uh, you know, alongside a, a um, Ratchet and Clank. I mean, maybe it would have been compared to Ratchet and Clank. Maybe it would have been too negative. Like, they would have been like, oh, this is copying Ratchet and Clank. But I don't know. You know, like, why not try? Why not try? I mean, Universal seemed to take all the completely safe options when it came to this. And it's very disappointing. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying all these, uh, you know, the cutscenes again in, in slightly. Hopefully, you know, now that you don't have to listen to, now you have to listen to me incoherently ramble, you get to see, uh, you know, in a, in a bit more detail, because there is a description in there, so maybe I suggest you pause it if you want to sort of read things into more detail, but yeah, I think with it, the video now going for 30 minutes, I reckon I've ranted enough, but there probably will be more from this, this is not the last I think we'll hear about it, but very, very interesting developments. Thank you again to Mike Mika for providing all this footage. I think you've done a fantastic job leaking, you know, leaking, sharing this with the public. And I think everyone really, really appreciates it. So thank you again, Mike. Thank you guys for all the support. As usual, be back to doing some more Let's Plays, Crash Bandicoot and Transcend Trilogy and Spyro videos and stuff like that very soon. Uh, it's going to be fun. Thank you guys. Goodbye. Hey, Scotty. Jesus, man. Yeah.